a modern podcast where Chris and Mike talk about TV, movies, superheroes, and everything in between. It's time for Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate. The show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name's Chris Dillard. And my name's Mike Royer. And on today's show, we talk about Daredevil, Marvel's Age of Ultron, Angelina Jolie, Netflix's Legend of Zelda, and more. Ooh, it's gonna be fun. It's a big show uh, for a short week. Yeah, no kidding. And I felt like for the week in general... Besides this uh, Daredevil trailer, it was a little bit light. Yeah, there was really no uh, nothing big uh, going on. Uh, no huge reveals on like TV shows or anything. Uh, it, no movie announcements other than the Daredevil trailer, yeah. Yeah, I guess we were just spoiled every other week. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, 2015's been exciting. We've had something to cover almost weekly. Yeah, it's just it's just gonna ramp up even more once this uh, DC universe really starts going. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Once they start, once we get what I think twenty next year is gonna be intense. Oh man, it's a, it's a good thing that the that the good people out there have a show like this to oh. keep them informed. Such good people, such good, <laughs> our constituents, if you would. Yeah. Of superhero slate, uh, we got some good feedback this week uh, from uh, Quentin. You know him. Oh, yeah, our uh, number one super fan. He's going to like this shout-out. I know. Uh, <laughs> big big kudos to Quentin for, for making my day the other yeah. day on Twitter. Yeah, he says he wants to uh, come on the show so he can rant about something. Gets His, his, his jimmies get rustled every oh time he God. watches the show. <laughs> I, I hate when my jimmies are rustled. <laughs> Which is funny you said that because I said that last night playing Grand Theft Auto Online. Oh, yeah, your jimmies get rustled? I did. I was telling people my jimmies were getting rustled. Uh, and <laughs> I was like, I haven't said that in years. Oh man, I finally I finally got that game, uh, just because I've been living out here in L.A. for a couple of years, and I was like, I should probably get this game that's basically built around this city. I started playing it, and it's so uh, so soothing to be able to drive on the highway, just however the hell I want, just <laughs> driving through cars, plowing people over. I mean, I really don't do a lot of the missions. I mean, I was expecting that. That's how every Grand Theft Auto game works for me. I just get sidetracked, and I never beat the game. But it's it's pretty fun. Uh, just crashing in the cars, getting my road rage out of me. Oh, I'm glad you're. Uh, um, you have something therapeutic. To yeah. Get that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. If any of you guys want to write in and tell us what Russell's or Jimmy's, uh, just go to superhero uh, hype. No, not hype. Oh my gosh. Uh, we're, we're, I did it last name, week. You did it this week. Uh, the names are too close, and I was even thinking about. It. I was like, don't mess it up. Superhero Slate dot com. Go oh. there. And uh, we, you, we got a little contact form. You can contact us and let us know it's rustling your jimmies. Maybe it's us keep messing up our own uh, URL. Yeah. Uh, if, if not, you know, you can just write to either of us at Twitter. Yeah, that's true. We got those Twitter handles. We'll yeah, tell we'll we tell you all about yeah. We'll tell you all about those at the end of the show. Yeah. All right. Well, enough rambling. I think let's let's get into this Daredevil trailer, which I've probably watched five times this morning oh, alone. Yes. Let's. <laughs> I want to talk about this. Okay. So Daredevil coming out april 10th on netflix right yes let give give us a little bit of a, a rundown of how the trailer goes down all right so this daredevil trailer uh comes on it's all it's very dark and blue tinted i don't know if you notice this mm -hmm. um but you know it opens with something very interesting you know, matt murdoch going to confession mm -hmm. uh so this is actually going to be bringing in you know cat catholicism and you mm -hmm. know uh, some character with a sense of religion other than captain america yeah big uh, part of daredevil's character yeah huge part in coming in and you know not confessing really for what he's done but for what he's about to do he says mm -hmm. which i don't know what part of like when in the the 13 episodes this takes place but it seems like it's maybe him you know trying to be forgiven for something that may be his last battle he sees yeah. Yeah, or maybe, like, murder. Maybe there's actually going to be, like, some serious, like, death in this show. That brings me to my next point. Um, as soon as the trailer was released, we'll come back to this trailer, uh, mm. Netflix put a description up saying it's rated TVMA, which Ooh, is TV Mature. That's good. That's uh, good. Yeah, it's essentially R. Like, movies are rated R, TV's rated MA. So it's the same mm -hmm. thing. So we're going to see something not very nice and friendly in this show. 
which uh, is going to be great. <laughs> oh yeah, it's something definitely a different take for Marvel. I don't think we're there was no humor in this trailer. No, yeah, that's what I noticed when I watched it last too. There's not even an inkling of it. It's just so brooding and so dark. And and it, I think that's that's cool too. Um, someone pointed out uh, when we watch this trailer, we see Matt Murdock getting out of bed shirtless, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. um, he's got scars and bruises all over him. Mm-hmm. And then the very last shot is you know him standing up in the rain and blood gushing from his mouth. Oh yeah. Uh, you know that's something someone pointed out. You know, Matt Murdock, Daredevil, he has no superpowers per se. He's not super strong. He's not super resilient. Uh, he just has enhanced senses. Mm-hmm. So. Um, how he uses these enhanced senses helps him, you know, get through these battles, but he's, he takes a beating and he stays down. It's his sheer willpower that keeps him going. Yeah. One thing that's uh, pretty crazy. I, I, I always thought, well, at least how they play it off in a lot of, uh, uh, the cartoons or comics is that daredevil's like heightened sense is actually like a superpower. Like they don't seem to portray that any just blind person could do what he does. But I was uh, listening to a crazy story uh, maybe about two weeks ago where they were interviewing a blind person who could ride a bike. And he, he, he was able to ride the bike by making clicking noises with his mouth. And he was using that to hear like the echolocation of these clicks that he was making. And I was like, holy crap, this is a real life daredevil. How are people not, just not talking about daredevil all over this story? So it, it actually kind of brings a little bit more realism to his character, and it's just crazy to think. I had no idea you could actually do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and I think something cool, too, is, you know, when we saw the Ben Affleck version uh, back in 2003, like, he had, mm-hmm. like, kind of like a, like you said, the sonar sense. Like, uh-huh. we saw sonar when we went to uh-huh. Daredevil Vision. Well, this one, Daredevil Vision, like, when he, he looks and is listening to somebody, it reminds me a lot of like the Assassin's Creed games we talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it focus, like you still see Murdoch and slash Daredevil, but like in the background you see the person he's listening to, like homing in on, mm-hmm. and everything else is kind of blurry around him. Like it, it's something I've seen in video games before, but nothing uh-huh. I've ever seen come to life in a show. And how they use show his powers, I think, is going to really define the show. Yeah, I think it'll be. Uh... An interesting little visual effect the way they convey just kind of the way he he interacts with the environment around him uh we have a very brief moment where he's fighting with his uh staff it looks like it's broken up into two pieces they look to they look to be white to me so uh, i don't know maybe maybe if he's just picking up random stuff off the ground or if he's actually getting some sort of like staff made or what he's doing there if it's just his walking stick but he seems to be beating some bad guys up with that, so that's going to be rad. Yeah, it, they remind me of those sticks a Mockingbird uses on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Those those two, I, I don't know the technical term for those, uh, just two rods, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, which was definitely, I like you said, they, like the way he was beating people with those was kind of uh. intense in his own manner. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think um, anyone that watches this is going to realize... That this is going to be going well beyond the the scope of maturity for the cinematic universe and even the the TV, uh, not universe, but you know what's going on with their uh, ABC shows. Uh, you know, I expect to get a little bit of humor in the show, but I think when it comes down to their trailer, they really want to stand out. They want to say, "This is Daredevil. He is a beast." He's violent. He's going to really, really mess some people up. Uh, prepare yourself. <laughs> yeah, it, there's something else I noticed. Like, you know, he throws somebody out of a glass window onto a car hood, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he's afraid to kill. Um, that's something, you know, you know, DC's always struggle with. Batman doesn't kill. Superman mm-hmm. shouldn't kill. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's always been a contented, con- like, something there. But, like, in Marvel movies, people die. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not afraid to show that, you know, yes, people will get killed. Mm-hmm. And, uh... It, it brings a more human element to Daredevil, which, you know, it shows he he's not a superhuman. He's not a, one of these high-powered guys. He doesn't have a super soldier formula in him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just a lawyer, which we didn't see any lawyer scenes. We didn't see him in a courtroom at all. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, you didn't get to see him practicing. Definitely didn't uh, do that. Uh, we, I mean, we didn't even see the Kingpin's face. 
Yeah, I think that is kind of the biggest stone left unturned is kind of the the villain arc that we're going to be taking over this season. Uh, they're relatively lucky where the Kingpin is a character that's going to have lots of other goons underneath them. So Daredevil is going to have a lot of people to punch in the face, which is going to be great. Uh, but, you know, they're not going to have to go to any sort of crazy extremes to explain like a super villain or his motives and stuff. You know, everyone kind of understands where like a mob boss is coming from. And the Kingpin doesn't necessarily have any powers. He's just a big dude that can just give a beating and take a beating. So I think this just grounds the show even more. And we'll really just kind of feel the uh, raw vibe of it. Yeah, the the two times we did see the Kingpin, uh, who in the comics, you know, is a boxer, and we definitely saw it in the first film, uh, mm -hmm. who's one of the strongest points, I think, in the first film, actually, uh, Michael Clark Duncan playing the Kingpin. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those, you know, switched race castings, but I, I had no issues with it. Oh, yeah, me neither. He, he nailed that. Um, but something interesting about, you know, we didn't see the Kingpin's face. We saw him with his back to a white painting of some sort. Uh -huh. uh, which is interesting. Uh, that's definitely a very ominous shot. But one at the end was, you know, where Matt Murdock's face in a close-up. And it's like he hears something coming to his left, so he turns, and as the camera moves with him, it, out in the background, it, in, out of focus, is the Kingpin coming towards him as Matt mm -hmm. Murdock, not Daredevil. Hmm. And um, I, I want to know what's going down with that scene. Well, I'm sure their I'm sure their paths will cross. Uh, if he's a, a lawyer in Hell's Kitchen, I'm sure he has to deal with a lot of the scum down there. Hopefully, we'll get a little bit of um, what is it, Coolio? That was in the last movie. <laughs> uh, Coolio. Yeah, there's um in the I don't know why they thought they needed this, but in the Daredevil movie, there was a director's cut that had a lot of uh some oh uh, that's right some '90s rapper, and I don't remember if it was. If it was Coolio or Busta Rhymes, I don't know. I can't remember who it was. It was just someone who is who has kind of faded into obscurity by now. Uh, but everyone always That's... talks about that. Wow, oh, it was so... Coolio. Just uh, as a fact, uh, okay. I just did some Coolio. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. Whenever, whenever you go silent for a second, I was just like, I think he's digging this up. He's digging up. The I, I, I wanted to know. I had to know because <laughs> uh, on Nerd Traffic, whenever I first launched it, one of the first things I did was rewatch Daredevil and write a new review uh -huh. of it. And uh -huh. uh, it was just there was so much dirt to dig at it. <laughs> it's hard to pay attention to these other like smaller details that just don't even matter. Um, but uh, it's definitely interesting. I think the only thing we heard from Kingpin, going back to that, mm -hmm. uh, someone said, do not say his name. Hmm. And I, yeah, I, I, do, I do remember hearing that. And I wasn't sure if, were they talking about not saying the Kingpin's name or was the Kingpin saying, don't say the Daredevil? That's, yes, that's the thing. I, it can go either way. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you um, give, you know, something a name, it kind of like builds up the hype and the legend of it. Mm -hmm. So I could see the Kingman saying, like, don't, don't call him that, because that's, calling him Daredevil would build fear. But at the same time, calling Wilson Fisk the Kingpin would allude that he actually is the mob boss mm -hmm. that's running that. That's a great, that's a great point you bring up there. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd really like to see how the, the themes and just the overall feeling of this show translate into the other three Defender series that we're going to get. You know, I'm curious if they're going to go the Marvel route and try to do each series maybe a little differently with a little bit of a feel. And then when they come together, maybe it'll be really interesting to see all these four different characters from different storylines with different vibes. Like maybe I think it'd be kind of funny to see maybe a Iron Fist or Luke Cage, maybe tell him Daredevil to stop being so serious and brooding all the time. That would be kind of funny. Yeah. It's, Daredevil's kind of like a blind Batman. So I could definitely see that. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, loosen up, dog. Yeah, and we finally got to see uh, that suit he has in action. And I think eventually, either maybe in season two or later in the series, he's going to get a full, legit Daredevil suit. Um, but I think this uh, this uh, ninja suit that he has that's been adapted from the comics is really cool right now. And I think it, it, really, it really sets in well with... A superhero beginning his career you know he doesn't have the connections to go make a crazy suit you know he's just gonna grab some uh cloth and some rags and just get all ninja'd 
Yeah, definitely. And I, I freeze framed that shot that had him on the rooftop, mm-hmm. and you actually get to see red lines running down the side of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I definitely someone I know who was on set during the production talked to me about this suit, and he definitely saw those red lines, and they definitely are more prominent in that shot than anything else. Hmm. And I could definitely also, when I think about it, seeing him getting the fuller suit towards the end of the series, because we talked about him being vulnerable, right? He's mm-hmm. just a human. He might need something a little more padding to take on, you know, maybe bullets or more bad guys later, mm-hmm. which could come into that, that final suit like we talked about. Yeah. Uh, either way, I think uh, this trailer was great. Uh, I'm super excited for April 10th. 10th right yes april 10th yeah. all 13 episodes on netflix yeah i'm i'm obviously going to be spending 13 hours on my couch watching this oh yeah yeah definitely uh That's expect, sure. expect us to talk about that on the sunday following <laughs> yeah it's gonna it, it might feel a little bit like homework but it's gonna be the best homework ever yeah <laughs> uh which brings me to my next uh, netflix show uh our first photos of kristen ritter as jessica jones came online this week they yeah. are they are filming the show this month and guess what, people? Jessica Jones looks just like a random person on the street. <laughs> uh, yeah, whenever um, <laughs> I told Mike we we're going to talk about this, he's like, what do you say? It looks like the paparazzi or something you'd see yeah. on TMZ. Yeah, it just looks like a TMZ photo of Kristen Ritter. Uh, I mean, it's not. this is no hate towards the show. It's just like this isn't much of a promotional image. At least when we got the first shot of uh, Matt Murdock, at least he had like the iconic Daredevil red glasses on and like the cane so you're like yeah that's daredevil it's like this is just kristen ritter on the sidewalk <laughs> yeah it could totally be confused for kristen ritter on the sidewalk i agree uh, um but something to you know kind of point out it was a lighter everything seemed lighter in that show like what whatever they were filming mm-hmm. whereas daredevil looks like it was filmed in like night they're mm-hmm. filming that during the day yeah i mean i think that just Definitely just goes to show that the Daredevil character, you know, that's where he lives and breathes in the night at Hell's Kitchen. Uh, I I think me and a lot of people out there, majority of this uh, people just don't really know Jessica Jones that much. I've only really read her when she's been in uh, group issues of comics. So I'm going to be looking forward to getting to know this character a little bit. Uh, you know, they're really going to have to dig in. They always have to dig in. Uh, on characters on any sort of television series, you know, to really uh, flush out the characters because that's what's great about television. So I'll be interested to learn a lot about Jessica Jones during this series. Mm-hmm. She's a pretty obscure character. Uh, only fans have, you know, her series Alias, not related to the TV show, mm-hmm. um, would, would know her. But I think that brings up to a second, like the point you brought up earlier, is they're going to have to find a different, uh, they're going to have a different genre for her, mm-hmm. which, you know, is going to be like, you know, a PI, private investigator, mm-hmm. maybe something close to true detective. I, I don't know. Um, it, for her, rather than, you know, Daredevil is, you know, lawyer by day, vigilante by night. Uh, so I, th- I, I hope they do something, a different genre with the show, like you yeah. said earlier. Well, I don't know. Either way, I mean, if this uh, Daredevil show is as awesome as it is, just being bloody and brutal, I mean, I would be okay with them carrying it over to these other series. Uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense. They're all kind of in that shared universe of New York City. Uh, you know, they're all going to be coalescing into one series. So, I mean, if they all want to be, if it all wants to be just dark and broody and gritty and ground level for this whole Defender series, I'm okay with it. But I'm definitely open to a little bit of a lightheartedness. It always, it's always nice to get some of that stuff come through, and Marvel's always really good at it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I'm, I'm definitely not expecting lightheartedness, uh, like uh-huh. you said, out of these, uh, but. I, I just definitely think we're going to see a lot more different lighting schemes when they film it. And that's the mm-hmm. filmmaker me coming out. Yeah. But, uh, and, and you know, one thing I've been thinking about, uh, I always think about this when it comes to, like, release dates or how uh, people in a group are ranked. Like, do you think uh, they're throwing Jessica Jones in between uh, um, Daredevil and Luke Cage maybe just because they don't think she's going to be as strong or maybe the series won't be... Um, represented as well because I mean I think it's perfect because I have a feeling I don't know if it's been officially announced but 
I have a feeling that Iron Fist is going to be the last of the series because I think Daredevil to start it off perfect. Everyone knows Daredevil; he's awesome, he's super cool. Uh, and then people that don't know Iron Fist are going to get to know him, and he's like basically karate kung fu. His whole series is going to be like an action movie every episode, uh, beating people up with like crazy magic karate stuff. Uh, so it seems like they're going to stick the middle. You know, kind of with uh, more real characters, you know. Their superpowers just seem to be strength. Yeah, well, I think that's the thing. Jessica Jones actually, in the comics, is the only one with, like, she has superpowers, like, you know, on par, like, fighting, like, Miss Marvel or something. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I don't think by putting her second, they have less faith in it. I think, if anything, they would put it third because they need to build off of, you know, hype of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't think they, they treat them any differently. I think this is just how the story progression has to go. Mm -hmm. Because in Jessica Jones, they're introducing Luke Cage for his own series, which is right afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I think I think just like how they have to introduce these characters. So going from a lawyer to a private investigator who's helping a convict. And I'm not really sure you know how Iron Fist fits into that yet, but I, mm -hmm. think, I think it's just a natural progression of the stories. Yeah, that's a good point. And, you know, it brings me to another point. Uh, you think we'll see these characters cross over before the Defender series? I mean, like you brought up Luke Cage and Jessica Jones, you know, you know, basically peas in a pod when it comes to Marvel. So it's think... de it's definitely been confirmed that Luke Cage is going to be in Jessica Jones. Oh, okay. Uh, it's so... not as like a full secondary character, but possibly like they're going to introduce him there in an episode or two before he comes into his own series. Yeah, so, th so that'll be kind of cool. We'll kind of see this universe coalesce before we get to the Defender series, which is something that I think is going to be really cool to talk about in general because we don't know much about it. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be like a mini series of like four episodes. We don't know if it's just going to kind of be like a, a Netflix TV movie or if it's going to be like half of a season or maybe even a full season. I, I, I think it's... Well, it's four episodes. I'll tell you now. So it's been confirmed. Yes, it is okay. four episodes, um, but I don't. Like, it could be four episodes. Make if they say episodes are forty five minutes, maybe it's two hour and a half long movies. Mm -hmm. We we don't know how they're going to just deliver that to us yet. Oh, okay. Well, either way, uh, I I think it's going to be really cool to look at my uh, Netflix queue and see all these uh, original series pop up with their artwork. That's going to be really cool. Oh, I'm, I'm man, a yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sucker for just that kind of like, that stuff doesn't really matter on the surface to most people, but like, I, it's just gonna be cool to see that stuff in my instant queue. Yeah, well, and, and that um, before we end this and and go on to something else, I just want to say Netflix and Disney inked a, a deal, right? like they're an exclusive streaming pact. Like, mm -hmm. so we're gonna start seeing like not till like 2016, some stuff is gonna trickle, but you're gonna be able to get all your Disney um, like movies, like Marvel stuff. Mm -hmm. on Netflix in 2016 when all these shows start hitting. So you're going to see an influx of Marvel stuff all over Netflix all at once. Oh, man, Disney's got all that money. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple of years we see, uh, we see a news article of Disney wanting to buy Netflix. That would be crazy. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, Jessica Jones, Netflix, Daredevil stuff coming right along. So that's good to good to see. Uh, yeah, I look forward to it, guys. Uh, something else. Uh, while we're gonna talk about Marvel, we're gonna cover a couple of Age of Ultron bits here. Yeah. Um, in the Great Britain, uh, including England and and Ireland and Scotland, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Age of Ultron moved up a full week. It's April twenty third when it's coming oh, out there. You guys are so lucky. I don't understand. <laughs> if we have anyone there listening. We're jealous. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty surprising that they that studios don't do worldwide wide releases at the same time, considering how vicious the internet is when it comes to spoilers. I mean, how I'm just gonna have to stay away from the internet for like a week or something. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's gonna be. It's gonna. I don't know. Like I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna get any ruins and I'm not gonna you know try to pirate it early because yeah. that would just ruin it. But like I'm hoping like it, you, Marvel has faith in this movie to push it up, you know, earlier in foreign countries. So hopefully maybe we'll see it come out on like a Tuesday here at midnight or something. Yeah, I'm hoping. I think that's a whole side of the industry that I don't really understand is these foreign releases. Um, 
So, yeah, so I don't know why it needs to come out a week earlier there. I, I believe, if I remember correctly, the first Avengers movie came out like a week early in Australia, it if did. I remember right. Yeah, yeah. So, so and I don't really remember getting any... Um, getting any spoilers from that so maybe people maybe people on the planet earth just aren't assholes and they just don't want to spoil everything for everyone else we can definitely they, we can definitely hope so uh i saw the avengers three weeks early at chicago um uh, for a promotion they had there oh yeah i remember that i was, I was at re- c2e2 and they just was, had it i was very jealous <laughs> yes you should have been uh, uh seeing it there like they only had a limited number of tickets and i was able to get on that like when it came up on facebook right away so i was really mm-hmm. soaked i was already going to be there uh, I got there and waited like four hours outside in line to get in, uh, and seeing it with those people, people were crying when Coulson died. Like these are <laughs> oh, no. the real fanatics. That you yeah, want to those are the super fans for sure. And uh, I got back and went to the convention, and I had a guy there, and he was like, "Tell me about it." I'm like, "No, I'm not telling you anything about this movie." <laughs> uh, the only yeah. only thing I did give him though, he begged me for this. Who the the person at the end of the credits was? Uh, okay. Which really doesn't affect the movie. Yeah. So. I mean, I want to give everyone out there a little bit of advice. Um, when it comes to seeing just any movie in theaters, uh, me and my wife have obviously a pet peeve. Everyone has this pet peeve of people talking in the movies. Or I know you have the pet peeve of people with their loud movie snacks, uh, <laughs> which is something that might be a little bit harder for you to avoid. The best yeah. thing to do is if you want to if you want to see a movie, like if you want to see Age of Ultron, the best way possible. Don't be some fuddy duddy that's just like, oh, I'm not gonna go to the movies. I don't, I don't like all the loud kids and everything. I'll just wait for it or I'll download it or something like that. Don't, don't do any of that. What you want to go is you want to look up your city and you want to see, you want to find the very first showing, like the very first showing. There's gonna be a midnight showing. Sometimes they even extend midnight way earlier to like eight o'clock p.m you want to see the very very first showing because the people in that theater are going to be the diehard fans they're going to be the people that don't say a single word they they actually turn off their cell phones for this movie and they just sit back and they enjoy it and then the best part about it is when stuff cool happens in the movie people cheer and they clap and they hoop and holler in a good way and that's that's the best part of seeing these uh first showings for sure and if you can't do those Sunday mornings, the very first showing on a Sunday morning, a lot of people are in church. That's ooh, that's a good. Uh, Your theater's probably idea. gonna be pretty empty. That's a good idea, but I don't know. I think even the the poll of Age of Ultron <laughs> might keep people from going to church. <laughs> I, it's true. I might see it several times that weekend. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So people in uh, England look forward to that uh, early release. We're jealous. Yes, and don't tell us anything. <laughs> yeah, shut your mouth. <laughs> Uh, second up, Marvel released some screenshots from the last trailer we saw. We talked about uh, that. Uh, they actually ID'd the, the image of Sandy, Andy, uh, Andy Serkis uh, as Ulysses Claw in the film, which we kind of, like you said, we kind of knew. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty obvious. I mean, the the character has a very, um, I, wanna, I don't want to say cartoonish look, but he has a very um, identifiable look. Stereotypical safari guy. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have the hat on or anything, but I mean, you could do, I mean, there are side-by-side shots up up all over the internet of him next to, uh, like, the Earth's Mightiest Hero version of him, I believe. Yes. Yeah, and it it looked identical to him, Uh, so this basically just kind of confirms that we're going to get a little bit of uh, Wakanda mixed in with this movie. Maybe Maybe not playing a huge role, but enough to to really bring in Black Panther. Yeah, and definitely. Uh, and Ulysses Claw, for people who aren't familiar, he went to Wakanda, the African nation, which mm-hmm. Black Panther's from, to get vibranium, which is what Captain America's shield's made out of. Mm-hmm. And what we're assuming Ultron's body will be made out of near the end of the film. Because it's nearly indestructible. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of interesting to see what they'll do with him. Uh, he, I mean, he's not like a huge player. I mean, he's big enough to maybe play a villain in like an episode of a cartoon show or maybe pop up for like one issue, but he's not necessarily a mastermind as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, later in the comics, his body turns to pure sound. His body is made of pure sound waves, um, which is interesting. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but we're going to talk about Black Panther later, so we won't, we won't harp on this too much, but Andy Serkis yeah. is Ulysses Claw. 
Yeah, so just gets you a little bit more excited for April 23rd. People in England, ugh, still jealous. Someone's toast jelly. <laughs> uh, lastly, uh, on the Age of Ultron, if you, you know, you saw the end of Winter Soldier, right? Uh, it's been long enough. I think we can tell people what happened. Um, yeah. The Hydra has the scepter from the Avengers, mm-hmm. and you're using it to create superhumans, uh, such as the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Now, I, I don't know. I might disagree with you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're creating superhumans with it. I think they're going to use it to control superhumans they already found. Nope. It, um, that's where I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, there's Marvel has an infinite comic, which is digital only. It's made uh-huh. for digital, called The Sceptered Isle. Uh-huh. It bridges the gap between Avengers, Winter Soldier, and beginning of Age of Ultron. Oh, see, now you led me on. You, yeah, you... I did. Ugh. I did. So I, I apologize. Uh, you can go to marvel.com, comics, get this comic for two ninety nine. dollars mm-hmm. um, it's, not, it's not much. Like, it, you've seen these scenes. It's, it's drawing of scenes like you know Black Widow turning off the, the portal in mm-hmm. Avengers. It's the end scene of Winter Soldier redrawn. Um, it, and, but it tells about how they're using the scepter to give people, quote unquote, power to fight against national threats. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really ruin Age of Ultron. Like, there's nothing, like, we didn't already know. Uh-huh. Uh, so, other than Mike here, who apparently thought it didn't give them their powers. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I guess we kind of have to bow down to an official Marvel digital comic. But, I mean, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to adhere to it. I'm just going to go into the movie expecting to see whatever, because it just, that just doesn't sound very cool to me. Yeah. I mean, no. this the scepter seems like it can. It's like a MacGuffin stick. It's like, oh, we're just. It can just basically do anything we want. Well, the, what's what's really they they lead us on in the comic is there's a scene like, oh, we found this connection between the cosmic cube slash tesseract and the scepter, mm-hmm. but the person who discovers it gets shot before he can tell us. So I think we're gonna learn about this in Age of Ultron. Like mm-hmm. I think we're gonna be kind of left in a state of limbo or our own little thoughts here until the movie. But I think they're going to, I think that was a tease saying we're going to talk about this. We're not telling you now because we're going to talk about this. Yeah. Well, I mean, either way, we all kind of knew that a uh, Scarlet witch and Quicksilver were going to somehow have to be reinvented. You know, Marvel studios is not allowed to use mutants. So they were going to have to come up with a way for these people to get their powers. I mean, we're kind of we're kind of finally getting in to the Marvel universe where the superheroes don't necessarily have, you know, science-based powers, you know, basically like science accidents or science experiments. You know, we're going to get into a little bit of magic with Doctor Strange. Uh we're getting into stuff from space, which is, you know, very f- uh, fantastical so very Thor yeah so you know we're in that weird range of just like you know they can't be mutants so what do we do you know they probably don't want to make fans mad but I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they pivoted away from whatever was in this digital comic because like you said it was digital and it was free so they're trying to get it no, out no, it's, there. it's not free I, it's, oh, it's, it's, like, it's 2 dollars like it costs money uh, okay. and it's confirmed as canon online like it's not like they wouldn't create it. Every other uh, prequel comic is considered canon. Hmm. Well, I, I still think uh, maybe they won't they won't hold too true to it. But either way, uh, we all knew that they were not going to be mutants, so they're going to have to come up with some way. Uh, so they obviously couldn't just like find two random super powered people and not explain how they got their powers. So if it's the staff, I guess that's okay. I mean, I would have liked something a little bit better. Well, uh, they, they they say that not ev- not everyone lives. Like uh, they they had a bunch of people vol- quote unquote volunteer. They die because they can't handle. These are just happen to be the only people who survived and got abilities. So it's not we, like they're creating an army because not everyone can handle it. So and didn't we kind of cover this in uh, Iron Man three? <laughs> Isn't this basically an extremist? Oh, not not even close. But, but we co- we covered the them not living and living because they're not strong. I don't know. Either way, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. This is this is news to me. I didn't read this. You're just laying this all on me, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, 
we'll we'll get on to the next thing. But that's if you're looking for something to bridge Avengers, Winter Soldier, and Age of Ultron, Separate Isle, digital only comic. Yeah, we'll see. I'll have to read that and get back to you. So uh, next up, you seen Arrow? I don't watch Arrow. You know uh-huh. Arrow. They showed the Adam suit for the first time. Yes, they did. Uh, so we got this uh, suit. It's going to be powered by a very, very rich man. Uh, we don't really know how it's going to fit into the universe quite yet. Uh, Wait, are he- you describing Iron Man? <laughs> Some people compared the suit a little bit to Iron Man when they uh, when they revealed it. Uh, we're definitely going to – I'm going to fit that in there with our featured image. So if you guys are too lazy to Google or just didn't see it, you can at least see it there. Uh, but it, it looks pretty cool. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like maybe a futuristic football player a little bit, but I, I read that some people out there really like the look of it. Uh, I don't know too much about the Atom. Uh, I think like people out there know right now, we're not huge into DC. Uh, we know enough to talk about it. We know enough to get our hands dirty, but I think when it comes to someone like the Atom, uh, not too familiar with, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this guy is basically going to have an iron man-esque suit uh and we're gonna see how uh that works into an arrow universe that doesn't really have too many superheroes uh i mean we have the flash but he's technically in a different city right now and they have crossed over and i really enjoyed their crossover episode but usually arrow deals with uh just kind of a little bit more brawling you know they literally deal with like bows and arrows and punching people in the face or hitting people with sticks and stuff so I heard rumors of possibly the next CW series, maybe being an Adam series. So that would kind of make a little bit of sense. Maybe his suit's a little too overpowered. Uh, you know, maybe move him into his own show, get him out of the, get him out of the the Arrow universe into his own little uh, city where he's running around. Yeah. Well, what's funny is uh, I've read um, I've read DC. I'm a, I'm a Green Lantern fan um, mm-hmm. through the War of Light series and. And Black Knight Adams, and he's essentially Ant Man. Mm-hmm. He's DC's Ant Man, so he shrinks. Mm-hmm. The, the Adams suit lets him shrink down to you know size of Adams. Um, but his name is the Blue Adam rather than this acronym of A T O M. Uh huh. Um, so it, I would like to see uh, you know something more tech based, like you said, well, like a tech based yeah. TV show. Well, they they specifically in I think the last episode he talks about how he wants to shoot lasers. Uh, so, uh, if there is shrinking involved, I think there's also going to be lasers involved. Yeah, see, I don't know, I really don't know much about the Adam at all. I didn't even know he shrank. Yeah, that, that's kind of what's been, like, I, I know that much about the Adam that he shrinks, and they really haven't been playing on that fact too much with this suit. Uh-huh. So, I, I, I don't watch Arrow, but I want to see what they do with the Adam suit. It looks cool. I think it looks awesome. Yeah, I think, um, whenever you get a break in your schedule, maybe in the summer when there's not too many TV series going on, you should try to catch up with... With Arrow, I, I, I know some people don't like it too much, but uh, I've heard – this is always one of those hard things where you're trying to get people to watch a TV series. You're just like, okay, you want to stick with it f- through like the first 12 episodes, and then it starts to get real good. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think that with the show, but I've heard some other people say that, and I think that's kind of along the same lines with S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, for you. You know, you just got to mm. stick with it, and it gets good, but I think Arrow's – I think Arrow's good. I think Flash is good. If if Adam gets his own series, I think it'll be good. Because, I mean, every time I watch the show, uh, my wife doesn't really watch it. But I'm always like, babe, babe, Superman's on TV. Superman's on TV. <laughs> and she's just like, shut up. <laughs> That's funny. Um, base, uh, talking about, you know, uh, upcoming, uh, you know, DC shows based on DC characters. Mm-hmm. Um, they're talking about, uh, I think it was Stars or Showtime, but uh, the show Lucifer is pilot is greenlit mm-hmm. tell me tell me a little bit about lucifer lucifer uh you know uh satan the devil um mm-hmm. neil gaiman wrote a series called sandman we've all heard of sandman mm-hmm. um lucifer was one of the devils the rulers of hell mm-hmm. and he gives it up and goes to la and opens a bar a piano bar called lux <laughs> and that's kind of where the series takes place uh the the comic series and hopefully you know the tv show uh-huh. I, I think it'd be a different take on it. I've always, me and my friend Brian of Comic Guy, we've talked about a series where writing a comic where it's the bar of superheroes. Like, there's uh-huh. one bartender for all the superheroes and, like, all the stuff he has to deal with. And I think this would be kind of interesting to see, you know, 
you know, you're, this bar is owned by the devil and what kind of goes on at this piano bar owned by the devil. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I mean, and it, um, it makes sense to kind of start drawing from Sandman. Uh, I, it, Sandman is on my list of shame right now of, of, of stories that I haven't read yet, but everyone, everyone will tell you to read this book if they've read it. It's basically, you know, it's going to be in like the top 10 of graphic novels for basically everyone out there that reads, uh, graphic novels. So I, I really got to get around to reading this. Yeah. I, I, I've read it. I've read most of it. Um, I enjoy it. I know a lot of people who don't read normal comics really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, maybe we'll see Lucifer a pilot just from that, that base alone. Yeah. And I mean, I think that that kind of goes to, so you're talking about like stars or, or showtime or something like that. We're starting to notice a lot of these, uh, fr- not necessarily fringe networks, but net- networks that you wouldn't expect to have TV uh, superhero series are kind of uh, starting to reach out there and get them. And I think that just goes to show you how uh, how profitable and how um, how good it is for networks to have like rock star series, like just one TV series. It's it's all Hollywood buzzwords. So mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um. So there's that. Uh, before we get off our DC thing here, we got a bit of news, a sad news for DC comic readers this week. Okay. Uh, the New 52, uh, mm-hmm. which was about three years ago, four years ago. Yeah, I think it was about three or four. Yeah. Is ending in June. Which uh, is crazy because this is the first I'm hearing about it today. Yeah. yeah uh, so um, they, uh, Stan, I don't know, it's not Stan, uh, something, Didio, I don't know his first name, the, the mm-hmm. head of DC. They have this event going on this summer called Convergence, um, mm-hmm. which is essentially all the universes blending together, which sounds an awful lot like Marvel's Secret Wars. Yeah. Uh, which, I it's ironic because they, they plan these three or four years in advance, so it's not like they like woke up and did the same thing, like, oh, if they're doing this, we're going to announce ours at the same time. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, the company said the New 52, as we know, is ending, mm-hmm. but that does not bring back the old continuity pre-New 52. Oh, Yeah. Uh, so they're both essentially ending, and going forward, they say the company is to focus on story, not continuity, which I think is going to irk some longtime fans. Yeah, well, I think this goes to show you kind of the trend of what happens when these TV series and movies become so much more profitable and popular than the comic books. I don't know if it's good or bad or if it's sad. Uh, but you kind of notice the same thing when Marvel's universe really started to kick up, you know, they came out with Marvel now. And if you notice the Marvel now titles that were coming out, you know, they tried to bring stuff out along the same time that a movie was coming out. You know, they're not necessarily trying to mirror like a Thor comic with the Thor movies, but you know, they're obviously trying to, you know, get people into comics that like the movies and they're trying to draw those similarities so i could see dc getting ready to do that i mean they're just they're just going to start uh expanding out this universe here in the next couple years so they're probably going to want a nice clean line that can kind of run congruently with the movies you know oh we got a green lantern movie coming out let's make sure we reboot green lantern I don't necessarily think it's the best thing to do in the world. I kind of thought that's what they were doing with the new 52, you know, all new stories, 52 titles. I thought that was the point of the new 52, but I kind of thought that was the point of Marvel now as well. They just, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is just, uh, this is just what we see only being in our late twenties. You know, there's probably people out there who've been reading comics for 40 plus years and be like, they've been doing this shit my entire life. They end the universes, they start them. All they're trying to do is sell these books. But if DC says they're doing it for the story, I mean, that's what you read comics for. So I don't know. Well, I I think there's a difference here. Um, Marvel now didn't erase the history. That's true. DC's new 52 erased everything before it. So it was essentially, it was told, but it no longer continued. Mm-hmm. Marvel's now was just another rebranding, per se, of their comics. Because um, we had an Avengers title, right? Um, and we've always had Avengers titles beforehand as well. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of... It's not a reboot. It was just a rebranding. Um, and this is... I don't know if it's going to be a reboot or how they're going to work without having continuity, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, are they just going to be like, you know select mini series from now on like oh this guy's got superman for six issues he's gonna tell his story the next one doesn't have to acknowledge that one even existed uh-huh. if there's no continuity so 
I, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't read a lot of DC now. Like, I said, Green Lantern through War of Light, and that was pre-New 52. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll definitely... I'm going to keep my eye on this and see what yeah. happens when everything kind of settles down more yeah, in I'm, the summer. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely take bets that this uh, that this change of focus, this uh, pivot, is 100% due to, the, due to their uh, uh, cinematic universe that they're starting. Uh these comics really need to uh, rely on the popularity of the movies. I mean, it's obvious that the comic industry is not dying because these characters are starting these crazy franchises. I mean, I haven't necessarily looked up the sales of comic books, but I think the books themselves, uh, they, they couldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt them to get a little bit of help. So I think that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, and, and that's a, the, the funny thing is, like, some of these titles coming out are, like, not movie or tv related though mm-hmm. uh, there's one called prez coming out just p-r-e-z is that the prez hilton uh, no, comic book story that we've all been hoping for no no not perez just Prez. <laughs> like short for president oh, okay uh, uh it was a, a sh- short series from the 70s originally in the 70s uh had you know neil gaiman ed brubaker frank miller on board actually mm-hmm. um uh, and you know but it's coming back again Hmm. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what they're doing exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, another one's called We Are Robin. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's like, I don't know if like, there's like a Robin gang or something. I don't know. Yeah. Either uh, way, well, we don't know. We'll keep it. We'll, I'll yeah. keep my eye on it. Yeah. It sounds like we're going to find out June, July in the summer. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, speaking of comics, just another quick top here. Marvel announced A-Force this week, mm-hmm. uh, which is an all female Avengers team coming out, uh, I'll- later this year. They're ghostbustering it. <laughs> yeah, um, they've they've done all female teams before. Okay, uh, like they, there was Defenders. Uh, the last Defenders was all female. I actually I own one of those issues. Uh huh. Um, but they're interested in all female Avengers team bringing back some characters like Dazzler from like uh-huh. the '80s disco character, and uh, they're creating a new character called Singularity, which is like a cosmic power character. We don't know a lot about. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. But I think it's a it's a pretty bold step. It's written by uh, G Willow Wilson. Um, which who does the current Miss Marvel series, which is critically mm-hmm. acclaimed. So well, I, I don't think it was done lightly, and I'm excited to see where A Force goes. I don't know if I'll read it, but well, I think uh, everyone out there should not be getting attached to anything because I have a feeling when the Secret Wars really kicks up, half of these people are just going to be dying. They're going to be falling into black holes, going to be getting stomped in the face by multiple different versions of Hulks. So hopefully uh, this team doesn't come together and just get all killed in one fell swoop. <laughs> uh, see, that's the thing. I don't know when it comes out post Secret Wars or not. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Um, it it kind of it's it says it's a spring crossover, so um, which kind of coincides with Secret Wars. Yeah, get worried, people. They're gonna be killing off people left and right. Yeah, I don't think so. But well, that, that's that's for another day <laughs> when we get closer to Secret Wars. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next up, Black Panther concept art was posted on Instagram. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's uh, very close to the original concept art we saw during the Phase 3 announcement. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much a close-up, but it shows like how he, they aligned his necklace in the comics that has like looks like teeth on it mm-hmm. into the suit more. Mm-hmm. And it's like vibranium lined. If you look at it, it's got close vibranium uh, metal like linings around the suit. Yeah, something with it. Um... I think it. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, concept art. You kind of always got a. There's always a. I would say like a deviation of like twenty to thirty percent with the suit. You know, you'll either see more detail or usually less detail when it comes to the to the movie. Uh, but I think it looks pretty rad. Yeah, it does. I um. Well, I'm gonna post this in our show notes. Actually, how's that mm-hmm. sound, Mike? That sounds good. So people can see this. Um, but I think Chadwick Boseman, Black Panther. Coming in phase three, gonna be debuted during Civil War, so we'll see it next year. Yeah, um, yeah. it's gonna look. It's we're gonna get the Black Panther we deserve. Yeah, I believe you were telling me earlier that this got taken down from Instagram pretty quickly. It did. The, the concept artist who worked on other concept art for Marvel posted it. I think mm-hmm. just not knowing what they were doing, uh-huh. and it was taken off Instagram pretty quick. It's two pictures kind of stitched together. Yeah, two squares. Uh, so, um. Take a look at it. Grain of salt, but it matches the official Marvel when they released. Uh-huh. So I'm feeling pretty confident. Yeah, so it, it looks pretty cool. Uh, 
Yeah, I want to see uh, Black Panther scratch some people up. <laughs> That's going to be the coolest scratching you ever see in a movie. Best can't fight ever. <laughs> uh, next up, we're going to cover some rumors. I don't think we'll do rumors a lot. Yeah, uh, well, when they come up, the, we'll the, talk about them. When they're big. Yeah. Then this is a big one. This is something Mike laid on me, what, Friday? Oh, yeah. After, I, was, I had no idea. Yeah, I was at, I was at lunch. Uh, we were waiting for our food to come out. Uh I, I had my phone out. I was just uh, scrolling through Facebook, and bam, right there, uh, a picture of a uh, link, and it says Netflix creating a Legend of Z- Zelda live action series. And I, I just couldn't believe it. I was just like, no freaking way. So I, I you know, I, I looked into it. I read a little bit. Uh, it sounds like they're trying to. I, the only thing that's actually been said is that they're basically saying Game of Thrones for a younger audience, which. Everyone who reads that is going to be like, that makes no sense. The The essence of Game of Thrones is that it is for an old audience. So I don't know what they're trying to reach at there. I would think maybe they're just trying to connect the popularity of Game of Thrones with the name of Zelda to create buzz. So I think that whole uh, phrase is just totally pointless and we should just throw that out and not even concentrate about it. Uh, but f- as far as I know, Netflix hasn't confirmed anything yet. Uh, they said hear... they officially said no comment, or like yeah. they didn't say any comment. Yeah, Nintendo said we don't comment on rumors or speculation. Yeah, uh, I, it sounds like whatever's true, they're still looking for a writer, so it's still very early development. Uh, I mean, I'm totally on board with this, just because I kind of have this. I have a little bit of a grudge against the Legend of Zelda series. Uh, I think. Uh, Nintendo and Zelda, they, you know, I, I don't want to say they ref, they don't refuse to innovate, but I mean Zelda has just been the same in like every series. I mean it's always it's always dungeon crawling, it's always like picking up items and stuff, uh, and it's just I understand that it's like Nintendo, but it's just like get some voice actors in your in your game. I know I'm gonna be enraging a lot of Zelda fans out there, but I really don't care because I'm not a diehard. Uh, Zelda fan. I've I've played a couple games through completion and they've been fun, but it, it always feels like I'm playing the exact same game, just with a little better graphics every couple years. Uh, so I'm excited to to get a link that talks. I wanna I want it to to see some really cool action. Uh, I'm a little bit worried because uh, sometimes I forget how Japanese Nintendo can be. Uh, like you're, you get really used to these uh, North American video game companies and just how they, uh, how their PR works and how they interact with, uh, you know, their consumers. And then you know something like E3 will roll around and Nintendo doesn't show up anymore, and they do these really weird Nintendo live stream events, and they're always really bizarre and they feel totally weird to me. It's just probably a cultural thing. I'm sure people in Japan are totally used to the way Nintendo uh, markets their stuff. But the only thing that makes me weird is, you know, how does a, a, a Japanese video game studio, you know, try to transition into what seems like they're going for uh, an American TV series? You know, I would assume that it's not going to be dubbed or subbed. It's going to be English. Well, I think I, I think with Netflix doing this, it will be American made. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So I don't think we'll have to worry about that too much. Yeah, but I mean, Nintendo's always been uh, pretty uh, precious about their properties, so I was pretty surprised to see that they were going to make a TV series about it. Uh, you think they would have learned their lesson from Mario, the Mario Brothers movie, but maybe they think that Legend of Zelda can translate a little bit better. <laughs> well, there is a new Zelda game coming out for Wii U uh, later this year. Yeah, and that, I saw the trailer. It does look pretty good, but I still feel like it's going to just be dungeon crawling like it always is. Yeah, and I have a Wii U. I, I, I skipped the Wii generation, and um, I, I haven't really done a lot of Nintendo since the original one. Mm-hmm. But I will say that Mario from Wii to Wii U, drastic difference in gameplay. Made me love the game, mm-hmm. actually. So I feel like they're learning. They're evolving. So uh, I, I'm not a Zelda fan either. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Uh, speak opposite of you on this one, but I uh-huh. I don't have as much hesitation because I just don't care. Yeah, well, I think this ties into the talk we had about um, uh, video game movies uh, a couple episodes ago. I'm I'm excited for video game adaptations, whether it's movies or TVs. You know, I want to see these things start to take off. 
uh, because I think they're cool. So yeah, I yeah. think that's I think that's going to be the next wave after superheroes. It's going to be video games. Yeah, and our last rumor for the day uh, is something a little. I don't have a lot of detail on this. Um, it's saying that Angelina Jolie is wanted by Marvel to do Captain Marvel. So, mm-hmm. um, that it's, she's be, be the director, and uh, because of her work with Unbroken, which came out recently. Uh-huh. Um, it's through some of the Sony leaks, apparently they Sony does not like Angelina Jolie. They weren't happy with this. Well, it seems like from the Sony leaks, they don't like just about anybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there was a good thing out of that. Um, <laughs> but uh, Marvel's looking at her to do... Captain Marvel, which would be kind of cool if she did. Uh, yeah, I mean, I that'd be a big I director. Seen, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen anything she's directed, but I hear that they've been, you know, they've been good movies. I I believe. I I really don't. I don't think I can say much on this because I haven't seen anything she's directed. The other thing I've heard is people want Joss Whedon for Captain Marvel. Uh, mm-hmm. That would be give him something to play around in, um, different mm-hmm. than Avengers. He wouldn't. He'd get to kind of create it, and I. I can go either way on this. Mm-hmm. If I had to choose between the two, Angelina Jolie will bring the gravitas that you know Marvel. A lot of Marvel movies don't have, mm-hmm. but Whedon knows comic book characters. Yeah, so I go, so, I go either way. Yeah, uh, I mean it'd be cool. Uh, I mean, it's kind of in Marvel we trust at this point until they do something bad. So <laughs> and, we'll just and even at their worst, they're still not bad. Yeah, I mean, and and yeah, so I think we'll be okay. Cool. Uh, that's really all the news and rumors we have for today. We got yeah. a couple minutes here. We've had by popular demand. People want us to know what steamed our broccoli. Yeah, people want to know. People uh, want to know. The the constituents, as you said, want to know what's making making us angry. And that's right. And we work for the people. <laughs> we work for the people. Yeah. So uh, so as we close down the show. Tell me what is steaming your broccoli. I tell you what steams my broccoli, and this comes up about once a week. Okay. Clickbait websites. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe you've touched on this a little bit through the show, so just get it all out. Yeah. So last week we kind of touched about it a little bit, where I was talking. To, we kept saying superhero hype because mm-hmm. we're stupid. Uh, <laughs> so if that's any indication, you probably shouldn't listen to our podcast because we're stupid. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, you, the clickbait websites come in two ways. They come up with falsified information, uh-huh. um, such as, uh, let's see, here's one, um, bleedingcool.com. I don't know if you've uh-huh. heard of it. I've heard of it. They're yeah. like my nemesis when it comes to like when I work on comic UI. Like <laughs> I strive to not be bleeding cool. Uh-huh. Like one of their articles, and finally, Dean Haspiel says his Wolverine is gayer than Assad Ribix. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> why, why does Wolverine have to be gay? Like, when what did this happen? Uh, things like that. Is Marvel killing readership on their own titles? Like, uh-huh. and then it goes to talk about whatever. Like, oh, they're canceling one series, so they must be wanting to alienate their fans, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. There's just so many like clickbait websites that like pose a question, then deliver rumors or gossips or theory. Yeah, just that, zero, just zero content that is official. Zero fact, zero sources, uh-huh. and then I don't know like what to do. like. I just get so mad. I'm like, I can't go to you ever again. Website. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's just the sad state of the internet, where you know it's it's the drama or the bad news, you know that that is really going to get clicks. I was uh I I was talking to uh, my parents just the other week. And they were talking about the snowstorm that they were supposed to be getting in town. And then the so- snowstorm never came, but the local news made sure to cover this snowstorm that never came for hours upon hours upon hours. Like there was a there was a storm that was supposed to be coming and they had like the, the blizzard warnings up like three days before the storm even hit. And it's just like they're just they're just drumming up some drama, just like Bleeding Cool might be doing. Yeah, it's just there's a lot on there. It just I don't know, it just it upsets me because then, like, people come like, oh, have you heard this information? Like, yes, I've heard it, but it's not real. Yeah. Um, and, and then, like, we go to Superhero Hype, where there's another website. This and Yahoo uh, uh-huh. News, they're delayed. Like, I don't know if there's some sort of process where they submit an article. It has to go through editorial uh-huh. and somebody else and then somebody else. But it takes, like, four days to get news on websites. And people who use these other websites and not... Mine. I'm not saying they should go to mine, uh-huh. uh, but like get better news because like <laughs> it's like 
Friday and everyone's like, oh, did you see this Daredevil trailer just came out today? I'm like, really? Like, well, it's Friday. Well, well uh, uh, we can, I'll give them, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let it steam your broccoli, Yeah. but I, I would rather it come out later than come out super early and just be totally factually inaccurate. There, it is, it, there is a fine line. And I think I'm more upset with the clickbait than the delayed uh-huh. news. Um, but yeah, I think your jimmies just get rustled. And and, they all get rustled, and all the websites just piss me off. And I'm like, I'm yeah, it. yeah. So I mean, I think that's just uh, that's just something that you're gonna have to learn to deal with because I don't think it's going anywhere, unfortunately. Yeah, I, it, I, yeah. And I think I, I again, I think I, my hate towards clickbait just rolled into that because like yeah. sometimes you'll see like oh like uh, yeah, I fell for this one on accident. Like Aaron Paul was cast for Doctor Strange. Oh yeah, I think we all fell for that. Yeah, one. and uh, I was like, okay, this looks cool. And then I'm like, this is definitely not legit. Uh, like yeah. a day later, and then I just kind of like shook my head in shame and moved on. But yeah, th- then th- you... this was this was steaming yeah. my broccoli. Yeah, uh, I think that you know, I think if your broccoli is getting steamed, there's not much you can do about it, unfortunately. But you can come on this show and we can just talk it out. We just let it out. <laughs> yeah. What's steaming your broccoli, Mike? All right. I'm going to tell you what's really, really steaming my broccoli. Uh-oh. So, we talked about that Adam suit earlier, right? Uh-huh. Now, so that Adam suit was released on Facebook, on the internet, through official means of the CW. I want to say on Monday or Tuesday. Arrow airs on Wednesday. You know, first of all, you would expect to see this suit in the next coming up episode. I watched that entire episode. We don't get a single bit of that Adam suit. They are totally just, they're just burying it. They're burying the lead. So first of all, that makes me angry. Second of all, why the hell do we need to see this suit already? I mean, come on. I already talked about uh, maybe an episode or two ago. I believe I believe we were talking about Beauty and the Beast, where I say I really like to see how they turn characters from, you know, pages uh, or a book into, or a comic or a cartoon into like a real life being. So I'm always looking forward to like, oh, how are they going to CGI the beast? How are they going to look? Is You know, and that's what I want to see revealed. That's the exciting part to me. I don't want to see the Adam suit revealed on Facebook at all, ever. Let that reveal happen in the TV show because they're going to reveal it. It's not going to be like, oh, there's there he is in the suit. You know, they're going to do some sort of like crazy like camera move where they pan around him to reveal him or he's going to pop up out of nowhere to save somebody and he's going to be in that badass suit doing something cool. Don't blow your load on Facebook. I mean, there's no there's no way around it. There's nothing I can do because I I unfollowed uh, I unfollowed the CW's uh, feeds for the Flash and Arrow because they're horrible with these spoilers. And but there's nothing I can do when they're officially releasing this stuff because if I like other people's uh, stuff, like other people's like news websites, they're gonna post it. And I'm not I'm not mad at those people because they're they're posting legitimate news that has been officially released. My problem is with CW. They don't need to be blowing their load. They obviously don't think people care, so they're just put, posting it out there and they want to they want to drum up some excitement to get people to watch the show, but I don't like it. I want to see the reveal on the show. Why is it so hard to ask for? They did this they did the same thing for Arrow. Uh, and they did the same thing with Flash. So in Flash, they uh, revealed what Reverse Flash was going to look like before we even got to see him uh, in full still motion where he wasn't like vibrating, so he's just blurry the whole time. And they also uh, revealed uh, that uh, who the next Black Canary was going to be. I mean, obviously, if you read the comic books, you know who Black Canary is supposed to be. But it's just like, just let us for a second imagine that it could be something different. <laughs> Now, now let me let me pose a question to you because I totally get uh-huh. where you're coming from. Yeah. Now, what if, say, CW didn't release the Adam suit, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Say someone like maybe my website, ComicQI, uh-huh. found it and said, "We're revealing this before CW shows up uh-huh. on air." Does that bother you? This is why it wouldn't bother me because because okay. if someone found it and it was supposed to be like something dug up or something leaked. 
that stuff always has spoilers in front of it. People are going to go, this wasn't supposed to come out yet. This is revealing what the suit comes like. So at least the featured image or the thumbnail that shows up in my newsfeed is only going to be a small section of the suit. Maybe it's just going to be a silhouette. Maybe it's just going to be a corner shoulder pad and there's going to be spoilers labeled on it and I won't click it. But that's the thing. When the CW officially releases it, they're just like, nope, you can go ahead and look at this all you want for the next two to three weeks until the next episode comes out for this. Uh, we want you to look at it. You know, it, it's just, it's a shame. I don't want this stuff to be spoiled, but I can't avoid it. I can't avoid the way the CW is pushing out their their PR stuff. No, well, maybe they should hire the fans in to run their, their website. Yeah, yeah. And I feel, I feel really, really horrible because I complain every single time they post this stuff. Um, on Facebook, but it, it's always white noise, and then there's always some there's always some idiot who replies to me that just says like, "Oh, well, why did you look at it?" And then I have to then I'm arguing with an idiot saying I can't not look at it. Shows up in my newsfeed, and then they say something stupid like, "Oh, you should have known what it was going to look like." And then I'm arguing with a dumb person, and it <laughs> just makes me dumber. And oh, that's what's steaming my broccoli. Yeah, t- take take a breath. Let the steam off. <sighs> let the, let the broccoli uh, cool. <laughs> It's just awful. Yeah, a little, little passion. That's all right. You're passionate yeah. about your characters. You're passionate about your shows. Just and that's why it keeps them going. Don't reveal this stuff too soon. That's all I'm asking. Yes. That's all and I'm and if you do, put spoilers first. Yeah. Spoiler tag. Jesus. Yeah. <sighs> all right. Well, well that, I think I think I that's think been that, enough for a day. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a good way to end the show. Uh, how can people follow you, Chris? You can find me chris dillard on twitter at valdan v-a-l-d-a-n mm-hmm. you can also look up the news on comic ui.com where you mm-hmm. can watch the daredevil trailer if you missed it already mm-hmm. uh and also you can find me on nerd traffic.com uh which i also write for so those are my three things where can people get you mike uh, well they can follow me on twitter they can follow me on instagram at mike royer design uh, you can go to pickledcomics.com, read a couple comics I've made. I'm a little behind on that, but I got some stuff in the sketchbook ready to go. Uh, but most important of all, you guys can go to uh, superheroslate.com, and you can find all of our subscription links. You can find the link to our Facebook page, you know, our YouTube page where we put up the the podcast in uh, video form for your subscription needs over on YouTube. Uh, and our show notes. Uh, if you looked at the show notes last week, you got an in-depth look at the history of the Ecto Cooler, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think show notes are going forward are going to be a big part of us um, uh-huh. because you know we're looking at things that you guys can't see. Mm-hmm. So we kind of want to share that with people. Uh, but also, don't forget, if you want us to cover something or talk about something or just want to let us know something, let us know on Twitter, uh, on superhero slate.com on facebook on youtube we also have an email you know superhero slate at gmail.com mm-hmm. let us know what we what you want from us and we will let you our constituents yes have what the, you want yes the constituents so oh, that's yeah. it that's it for yeah. me today yeah, it was been a great a, show been a hell of a week all right yeah so, um yeah i'll talk to you next week man yeah we'll see you guys all right later bye Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe!